Uh, welcome to another episode of St. De Vincent Untold Stories. On this episode, we look at uh, the loss of a volcano in St. De Vincent, uh, the issues surrounding the relief money, and we talk about the most affected areas in St. De Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, big ups to all of my subscribers and if you are new to the channel hit the like uh, button and uh, the subscribe button and hit the bell icon because you are going to want to see this video and many more like uh, this one as you can see uh, the main road in georgetown is already cleaned up uh, but the back road still have a lot of ashes uh, the youths of Chateau Belay are complaining uh, that Chateau is being left for last. Because as you see, the Georgetown main road is clean, it's just the back roads now. Have a look at the Chateau road. Uh, don't you see a difference than the one I just showed you in Georgetown? Look how thick the ash is still in Chateau. Uh, so, uh, the people of Chateau Belay are asking why aren't they getting the same treatment as the prime minister's constituency uh, so the question is uh, does any constituency in saint vincent has more importance uh, than others in saint vincent and the grenadines uh, so uh, the georgetown main road is cleaned and the chiplo r supermarket is opened what georgetown need now is water uh, that is what is affecting them at this said uh, moment. Uh, there is still a lot of dust, so the people can't uh, move back up right now. Uh, plus, there is no water. Uh, once Georgetown is power washed, thing would be nice again. Uh, to be honest, uh, not much roofs caved in in Georgetown. A couple of well caved in in Chatterbillet. Uh, the issue with Chatterbillet is that the ash seems thicker than most places. Any time you stand in the road at Chatterbillet, it is like you are in the Sahara Desert. I don't know how, why that order was given for persons to return back to the orange zone as yet. Because when I looked at places like Byra and Goss, uh, there are still ashes all over the place. A lot of these persons have a lot of young children. Uh, yesterday, we went out. Uh, to speak to several individuals and one of those individuals was the man of bongo remember when he said in that interview with ken vilhan i mean a guy is uh, what uh, bongo was saying is up to this day uh, that he's in the red zone and uh, nobody ever gave him anything uh, personally i don't want to say what bongo said so let's watch this video and he would explain for himself Come up here. Come. <laughs> Wonder where I go on. Eh? Oh God. Everything done. Mikey Huggins and Awaken Lane. Uh, so, what the Bongo is basically saying uh, that he showed up the road while food was sharing out. And when he went to ask for some, uh, they told him everything was finished. Uh, so, you want to tell me? Uh, that Nemo's storeroom is full and uh, Bongo couldn't get uh, two canned stuff to eat. Uh, my question is, what a building is the food being distributed in and who is distributing the food? Mr. Stan Pom. Stan Pom. So what do you need, Bongo? Some help? <laughs> you don't want any help? If they help me, I will take it. Since the eruption, you got help? No doubt. Uh, nobody even with the interview you did nobody reached out to you and uh, not even a box of food stuff no, no. zero yo nothing i am just i but you know you know i hear the company i'm so proud yo uh, so you see, even the greater Bongo did not receive anything and Nemo's warehouse is full. Uh, so you wanna tell me, someone who entertained you throughout this ordeal, I wasn't given anything at all? Uh, so now you see. Uh, that some evacuees are getting better treatment than some and also persons in the red zone are suffering 
I am not going to bash anyone. Uh, but there are some evacuees uh, that got government jobs uh, that haven't lifted a muscle since the eruption started. And uh, they are in apartments uh, getting bucks from Nemo every week. Still, they are getting full pay while there are others who haven't received anything as yet. Uh, let me repeat this again. Uh, do not go back to the orange and the red areas empty-handed. Uh, make sure uh, that a decision is made by the government to supply you when you go back because there is nothing in some areas to go back to. Even if they supply you with seeds, uh, please remember uh, that ashes is underground. Work needs to be done first to get rid of that ash. Uh, you are going to need uh, money to buy things like a manual to take care of your crops. And uh, the way the manuals and so on were distributed the last time when they said they would help farmers, uh, that was political because some farmers did not get anything at all, while some men who just planted a few scythe uh, had nothing at all in their backyard get. Uh, right uh, now, uh, the ball is in your court. So if you want to get influenced uh, by people who would get and you won't, well, follow them. Uh, go back to be hungry. If you love extreme poverty, uh, go back empty-handed now. Uh, some of you who are defending wrong, you better not uh, make you and your kid's name get called up in anything wrong because they'll come for you immediately. Let someone make a report about you at this station. Uh, by this evening, you would be sitting uh, behind the station bench. Uh, so go ahead, uh, defend wrong. When your turn comes, I hope you don't uh, cry wolf. Uh, personally, shelter life isn't easy uh, because, say, for example, you go out and you miss a lunch, you'd be hungry until dinner time. Uh, that is like prisons. As I mentioned in a previous episode, a lot of relationships would be broken up uh, because uh, men won't be able to find jobs to take care of their families. Uh, take a time, uh, sit down and analyze the situation for yourself. Uh, though you see how the van men were dealt with uh, just before the eruption, uh, things smooth now, and that's the way how they operate. Uh, because the van man helped out during the eruption, uh, they are taking time with them now. You notice they aren't harassing you, telling you that uh, there are too many passengers in your van. Wait till everything gets back to normal and you would see what I'm talking about. You better stand up for your rights now. Uh, so, we witnessed yesterday uh, that the cleanup process has started in the countryside. Uh, to be honest, I saw two men one side cleaning and I saw three men another side. Uh, so, I questioned them. I asked them, when you do the cleanup, how are you going to get uh, paid? Uh, they said uh, by the government. So, if the government is paying, why only five uh, persons? Uh, so, you want to tell me? You can't uh, put... 500 persons on the countryside to clean up. 500 in leeward and pay them just the same. What are you trying to do? Is it the brain you are using again to try to prolong the thing? Who says that money was spent this way or that way? Uh, this time around, you know, we are not taking that excuse, you know. Uh, there are persons in the shelters who are willing to go out and work, especially the young, strong males, to get a dollar so that uh, men won't be able to take their woman from them. Uh, these people uh, know what they are doing to us. Uh, they know if they hire 500 men Monday and uh, the men are paid uh, by Friday, uh, the accountability would show how much the men were paid. But if they hire less men, uh, they would prolong the days so they could come up with any figure and say that they spend thousands and thousands there, which is not true. If you want to see uh, more supports on the street, Crying out for justice, stop wearing the political shirt and making it look like it's something political. Uh, the whole nation is feeling the pressure, I tell you. Uh, residents of OTR, uh, places like Pepper Village and so forth. Have you seen your houses? Uh, tell me if you want to go back or not. Uh, big ups uh, to St. Vincent, uh, the regional islands and the international countries. We thank you for your support always. I'm out. <laughs>